recording. And we're going to pop up the Applewood website. Good morning, everybody. How's it going today? This is episode number nine of the Applewood Chevrolet podcast, home of the number one, soon to be number one automotive podcast in North America. But we are right now, currently, to this day, this year at least, maybe not this month yet, who knows, but we are the number one volume GM dealership in Canada. Thanks so much for joining us. We have Jeff Killender here and Matt Cusadel. Both have been on the show before. Yeah, that's oh, for sure. Um, we wanted to uh, get back at, back in action here. We've we've had rabid fans say, "Where'd you guys go?" So uh, we had to bring these two guys back here today. Um, Matt, we yanked you out of the shop. What were you working on this morning? Uh, just working on a uh, Buick Regal. What year was a Buick Regal? Uh, I believe it's an 03. 03. And yeah. what was it, what was the problem with it this morning? Or not the problem. What what are they getting fine tuned? Fine tuned. No, just doing some brakes and wheel bearings. Well, that's pretty. That's a pretty yeah, good bet, easy huh? Stuff, yeah. <laughs> well, you. It's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah. Well, it's. Uh, you guys have been pretty busy this spring, or, or how would you say COVID has kind of affected the service department? A lot of people aren't driving as much, but. Yeah, a little bit of up and down. Now it's tire season, so it's picked up. Yeah. It's pretty. Uh, Pretty steady, pretty actually kind of busy in the shop. So what do you guys find people normally kind of when, when tire season's happening, you basically get a load of people who decide, hey, I need to change my spring tires. And then they're like, oh, by the way, my car's making this noise or this is a problem. Is that what you guys find? And then basically goes from the lube guys to the general guys? Is that kind of how you guys split it? Well, usually they'll uh, book it in for like kind of like a semi-annual inspection. Gotcha. Just to go over, you know, when you got the wheels off, we check the brakes suspension and kind of go over the car yeah make sure it's good for like another six months so what do you think about some of the uh some of the companies like toyota like the non-domestics who basically force you on a warranty schedule and they say hey you have to have this service done at x point of kilometers or else you avoid your warranty why do you think gm doesn't do that uh it's hard to say i, I mean I, I think it's a good idea that that uh like import dealers kind of do that mm -hmm. helps you maintain the car yeah um, but I find GM does have a, a much better warranty. Really? Yeah. So, okay, hold on, let's stop because there. Because, like, back to what you're saying, uh, they kind of force, like, with import dealers, and yeah. then they kind of avoid the warranty, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, like, GM's kind of just, like... So, GM covers three years, right? Yeah. And Cadillac, cover, Cadillac and Buick cover four years, right? Four years. And a lot of the Kias and Hyundais and Toyotas now, we're seeing five-year warranties, right? I know for Toyota, it's still three. It's only three? Yeah. And is it comprehensive. And it's probably very fair to say all warranties are not created equal, right? I would say that's fair to say. But it's just like the the details and the specifics of those. Yeah, some some parts aren't covered. The, like wear and tear item, obviously, like, uh, like tires or... Well, even brakes, I'd say, uh, I believe they're 20,000 kilometers. Yeah. Up until, like brake squeal or. What's the worst pair of brakes you've ever seen? In battle metal, I guess. Really? <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say. <laughs> no pad left. Yeah, yeah, like they they basically they they got out of their car and they stopped it physically. So okay, guys, yeah, today. Have you ever seen it? Hold on one sec. Have you ever seen it so bad, <laughs> where you've seen it so that the rotor almost like sorry the yeah, pad it, almost falls yeah. out between the rotor and yeah, the caliper? Yeah, Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. But like, what what do you tell? Like, what do the service advisors tell these people? Or like, what's what do they say? Well, obviously they heard a noise before. Like they just keep <laughs> driving, right? It, for, for it to get that bad, yeah. it's it's. I didn't even hear anything. Are yeah. you sure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, it was like this when I bought it. Yeah. So hey, do you think there's going to be brake problems on this uh, on this Google car? So apparently, like we won't go into too much detail with this. I'm gonna I'm gonna screen share it, but. The whole gist of this article is apparently Fiat just ba did some kind of a collaboration and they put these little Google stickers. Hey Google, you know, all over the car. You know, they have the little, you guys ever use those Google Home Minis, those little speakers and how it'll like light up at you? I don't, I don't quite understand what the experiment was. The seat looks like Tetris, man. What's up with that? Yeah, it looks, <laughs> that would be cool if it, uh, could you imagine LED. touching your seat? Yeah. Am I winning? <laughs> <laughs> like, that would be the worst game of Tetris ever. But, yeah, I, I think it was just an experiment to show that, hey, we're relevant. Uh, and, and, look, we have Google in our cars. Isn't it crazy, Matt? Like, what do you, th what do you think? 
the future of infotainment, it's like, I know it's not normally you who deals with the trims for stuff like this, right? But now it's like so many cars on the road. Like, I don't even use the infotainment. I hate to say it. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I was going to say, I'm limited on the infotainment as well for what I use. Yeah. And I, like, it's interesting because if you, if you look at kind of how that's developed, three years ago, we were all still using just the regular GM infotainment. Now it's like, it's not even like I'm making a choice. As soon as my iPhone with wireless CarPlay gets in the car, automatically connects. it automatically connects. Automatically. And, you know, the whole trade secret, I know sometimes people will say, hey, like, what's the point? You know, I like navigation. Well, you can download Google Maps for offline viewing. A lot of people don't know that. It's not going to give you the real-time traffic updates, but, like, listen, if you're concerned about saving data, I don't know why you would be in this day and age, but, like, if you're concerned, you can literally have, like, the whole of Ontario blocked off for, like, 400 megabytes. I didn't know that. Yeah, you can. It's actually really easy to do. Maybe we should teach, teach our listeners. That'll be very difficult in an audio format. Close your eyes. Yeah. Now go to the settings. <laughs> um, but, Matt, do you think... Uh, do you think cars are going to keep going this way? Like, are we going to have, like, Google Assistant on the windows? Are we going to have Siri helping you open your trunk? I think uh, definitely it's going to go more more technology and things are going to advance for sure, yeah. Yeah, that, mean, that, that would be pretty sick. Yeah, Siri, roll down my window and order me a coffee. That would be pretty cool. More technology, more problems, though. Isn't that what uh, Notorious B.I.G. said? Is well, it? Yeah, more, more technology, more problems. I, I think it was something like that, yeah. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> I think yes. it was something along those lines. <laughs> yeah, it, and I don't know. I, I pulled this article up, not that it's the most entertaining thing in the world, but I just thought it was really interesting that it looks more like an advertisement for Google than it is the car. Definitely. You know what I mean? Like, it was literally just like, hey, let's prey on yeah, some Google. brand who will say yes. Yeah, Google's like, hey, we need some cool car advertisement. Like, who can we go for yeah and and i guess the swag bag here completely irrelevant uh the google hub thing you guys remember facebook had one of these little screens too i didn't know no yeah i i I, I was reminded of it very recently because i remember facebook um i was on facebook marketplace and somebody was selling one like original inbox like a hundred bucks and what it does it's like it allows you like facebook messenger call somebody and it's like okay but why would you want this in your home because there's so many ways you're already being spied on. Where, where's the Facebook car? That's what I want to know. Zuck. Right? There's an Apple car. Now there's a Google car. Like, yeah. Where's the Facebook car? Yeah, that's that would be interesting. Checking your news feed while you're while right. you're driving. Right. Yeah. And you could, I don't, I, I don't know. What does your car say about you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> share status. You press a button on your steering wheel to share an update. Yeah. <laughs> Take a live photo of yeah. the road. <laughs> like, what an awful innovation that would be. So I've sent a command to your Fiat 500 to switch on the lights. So I guess it's no joke. I don't know. Google press. This is clearly just an expose to, to for them. To switch on lights? I guess. Does my car not do that automatically now? Well, I suppose they want to try and dip out the key fob for your phone. Ah. They want to testify it by just having like a Google app. I don't know. Anyways, we're done with that. Okay, so if, <laughs> if you guys didn't know what car this was... Would you say it's a good-looking car? Yeah, definitely. It looks like a Tesla, no? It looks like a Tesla. You could tell. I was going to say, it almost has some, like, some Toyota to it, like a CHR kind of. Yeah, they got the Toyota vibes, right? man. Yeah. And it's very... Just, cl- yeah. Just not as choppy on the body lines. More smooth. You know what I mean? The rims kind of remind me maybe like a Kia. Right? Yeah, <laughs> you got it. It's a Kia. And it's almost hard to tell because they got the new logo on it. But this, I pulled this up because this is crazy. This is a Kia, and we're going to look at some of the specs on this car. So it's, an, it's a new EV car, the Kia EV6. This thing has, we're, we're going to scroll down, we're going to find it. It's a good-looking car. It is, yeah. But then you look at it, and it's got a 500-kilometer range, huge battery. Hold on a sec. The performance, 576 horsepower. Holy. Zero to 103.5 seconds. Pure power. That's a fast car, and that's a Kia, and this will probably go, once batteries hit the mainstream. I was going to say, does it say its range? Yeah, 518 something kilometers, Holy! which is pretty crazy. Yeah. But do you think it's like, how fast do you think the batteries are going to degrade in these cars? I I hate that we have to keep coming back to these electric cars, but like, 
the, this is all the news right now. Nice looking yeah. car, yeah. Well, it's it, like it's like a, it's like I kind of think like, okay, for instance, I mean, I had the iPhone. Yeah. I had the uh, the X, just the regular X. Had it for about yeah. a year and a half. Mm -hmm. You charge it every night. You do like your thing. Yeah. Well, after a while, like the battery, the battery just doesn't just last the day anymore. Yeah. So like, how's it going to be for this? And it's like, yeah, I know there's like, you know, your rules of battery health. You got to let it die all the way and all that stuff. But it's like, are you really going to let this die all the way? Like I was actually thinking about it on the way to work this morning. Honestly, like I, I got passed by a, a bolt in the EV lane. And yeah. There's one guy, and I'm like, oh man, that'd be nice, kind of to have that. Yeah. What if I could get that as a demo? And then I thought to myself, yeah, but dude, you'd be like at that grocery store and be like, oh my god, I got two kilometers left to get home. Like. That would be a fiasco. You know. Yeah. And then I'm like, uh, you know what? I'm not really interested because it's nice just to hit a gas station and just fill it up. Well, I don't I have to worry about it. I I bet you there's probably going to be like fast charging gas stations where you can just get like an extra 20 30 minutes yeah i was gonna say if you had that then you would take that anxiety right that range anxiety yeah there's um i remember i was last time i went to las vegas this was like i guess three years ago there's vending machines now that basically you can plug in like little battery packs like literal like portable chargers right so it's just like god knows how bad this is for the environment but you plug it in and it's this little nub at the end of your phone and it'll basically keep you going for like an extra 45 minutes so you can imagine there's probably a lot of girls in las vegas that just go out with a pocket of these and like 20 percent battery and that's the gambling <laughs> that they plan on doing that night right stay connected to my friends you know and for live, as long as possible yeah and live on the edge right but i wonder if they're gonna have something similar to this right where it's just like something the size of a backpack well, you know what I mean? Like, and you could just throw it in your trunk as like the emergency, you know, it'll yeah. be, it'll give you like the faux Range Rover effect. Yeah. Like a, but instead of a spare tire. Yeah. You, like, you know how Range Rover, like the new Defenders will have like the cargo thing on the side. It kind of looks like off-roady. It looks yeah. pretty cool. Imagine they do that and there's one that was all badged up. What's the uh, price of the car? Does it say? Or? That's the golden question, man. I think it's a little bit closer than being a concept car. We'll pull it up. Kia. EV6 Matt, price. Matt, you guys work on these in the shop, like like the volts and the bolts and stuff like that, is it like just regular maintenance? Are you guys having to pull batteries and check stuff like that? No, those, they're pretty good, honestly. They're usually just regular maintenance. Like the volts, they're actually one of the best uh, cars in terms of like maintenance. So really? Like they stuff. hardly need anything, man. Really? Yeah, they're very good cars. Wow. So 55 American for the top trim. 45 American for the base trim. So they're basically the same price point as the model Model 3s. Yeah. Which are still pretty expensive cars here in Canada. Like the ones that you see on the road, they look entry, but they're still around 50, well, 60 K. I mean, that's a pretty expensive Kia. That's a very expensive Kia. Yeah. But let's be honest, if you get 500 kilometers of range and you get to go that fast, it's probably gonna put some $60,000 cars to shame. Like it'll just be, it'll just be electric. I don't know. It looks like again price point wise these are speculations but it looks pretty cool electric motors of 577 do you remember um do you guys remember seeing the ken block video where he has the maki -E mustang yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, remember i remember seeing like a video like behind the scenes and he's like yeah we basically got like seven minutes of driving out of the thing like it's 1300 horsepower whatever it was but he's like yeah we got like third like seven minutes of driving then we had to charge it for like half an hour so i wonder if this if, yeah you put it in ludicrous mode or crazy mode or like ticket mode ticket and then it's going to last you like half an hour it's going to give you a warning saying this is going to put wear and tear on your uh on your vehicle's components so do you guys think uh price of electricity going to go up no in uh, terms of for charging or they're going to have to so because i mean like with gas car and the price of gas, there's tax for to fix the roads. Of course, or yeah. Whatever, like X. if 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 things do go, which looks like they're def it's going that direction anyway. Like yeah. For electric car, what do you think is going to happen with the prices of uh, hydro? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. So you think people are going to start putting like solar panels on the roof and like windmills so, in the backyard and stuff like that? Yeah. So I think what we've seen, and I've talked about this in other episodes, and I just ramble about it all the time, but like. By 2030, you're going to hit this this tipping point where electrical energy is going to be free. It's just all going to be solar. They're already getting there. The main element that they're solving 
is obviously the generation and the storage. Storage is the biggest thing. Just about to say, yeah, where they so store it, yeah. So Tesla has something called the Powerwall, and basically you can have up to 10 of them, plug them in at the side of your house and store the charge of whatever solar panels, right? Um, the idea is right now they're not that efficient, but as things continue, the, like the curve, what they project, by 2031, there's something called the halo effect for electricity, where it's gonna be cheaper to actually pay and buy the, you know, the packs and the solar panels compared to actually buying from the grid or Hydro One and the admin fees and the expenses and the taxes. And I think at that point, the government will have no choice. Like, tax won't work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, imagine you have this, this one freaking guy who's got a giant property, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to power all of my town with solar. And he just puts up some solar panels. And he just, imagine that. He just has these little juiced battery packs. He rents them out to people. That's totally a possibility. And it's, we're six, seven, eight years away from that. It's going to be a very, it's going to be a very interesting time. It may be a long time yeah. if we're locked indoors. It those, could be very long if we're <laughs> locked indoors. <laughs> for those eight years, but assuming we're allowed to roam around and get some fresh air every once in a while, yeah, it'll be here sooner than we think. That's I, like 2035. They're going to be like, yeah, we're entering the 54th wave of the lockdown yeah. now. Oh. Right? No I, more communication, cell phone devices allowed for this month. I th yeah, like, I don't know, man. But at that point, there's going to be, I feel like, you know how you get those emergency alerts? Yeah. I feel like they need to add some gamification to it. So it's like the government of Ontario, I think, especially, I just, I'm just making stuff up now. But <laughs> I think it'd be hilarious when they start sending those alerts. Like there's buttons that you can click to, you know, get points for staying indoors. You know, like something the, to motivate you to stay inside. Hey, enable your GPS with the new government of Ontario yeah. app. I wouldn't even be surprised. Every, everyone's getting ankle bracelets. I wouldn't <laughs> be surprised. Dude, yeah, you'll collect score streaks. Congratulations, right. you've stayed at home for seven days. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Could you imagine an ankle bracelet and they just track where you are? But but yeah. you'd get government points. You've been at home for three days. We'll honor you in Uber Eats for free. That would be pretty significant, man. <laughs> Or they'll just mail you food stamps or something. <laughs> yeah, food stamps, yeah. You never Here know. Here are your food stamps, but you can't go out to use them yet. Yeah, you, you have to wait. It's like a bond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seven more days, buddy. Well, it's very, it's very interesting if they did that. I want to talk about monster trucks because, Matt, you know, EV stuff is, you have much more to offer. Let's just put it that way, right? I want to talk about monster trucks with you. I don't even have to know. I, I know, obviously, we've known each other for a while, but I know just by looking at it, you could probably get down with monster trucks. Do you have a monster truck now? No, man. Do you want one? <laughs> Is it the beard? That, like, come on. No, you have like, tw you, you're always tinkering with, with toys and ATVs, man, and dirt bikes. But I'm assuming this is like a staple you would take your kids to, right? Oh, I've been to Monster Jam. Yeah, I've taken my kids. I loved, time, yeah. man, it's growing great. up. Yeah, just I've the been... smell, just the sound is amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. so cool. I remember going when I was a kid. My dad took me all the time. And you, like, I hate to say it, but like, why was Grave, did they let Grave Digger win? Or was it rigged or was he that good? I don't know because Grave Digger was never my favorite. I always liked the guy with the two like muscle arms. And yeah, the it's, it's Maximus, my, something, something. Something like that. He was always my favorite just because I liked the look of his car. Yeah. It, what do you think? What do you think, Matt? What, did they rig it? Did Grave Digger pay off the judges? <laughs> and how did they, was it screams? <laughs> Woo! How did they judge it? I don't remember at all, man. Man, I don't know, man. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> I, I, all I remember was walking around, and every once in a while you'd see a booth, and there'd be like girls be like, buy the Grave Digger shirt. I'd be like, Dad, can Dad, we? Please. Can we? <laughs> Please. Uh, yeah, here, Monster Truck. Honestly, when Monster Trucks came to town, like, you don't even have to be a car person or yeah, like any of that Jam, stuff. Dude. It's just El Toro Loco. I remember yeah, that one, too. Oh, me memory lane. What I, is this I usually, one? Uh, I'll, I'll go on the Sunday instead of the uh, Saturday because, you know, they're just going to wreck the truck. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, Saturday, they're kind of more easier on the truck because, you know, they still have the Sunday Good. show to come, right? I, was like, I never thought about that. I don't that. know if my dad thought that way. I was like, yeah. I, like, I always go on the Sunday. Yeah, that's a must. They, Dude, yeah, donuts till the till yeah. the body falls apart. What is this car, though, the Grave Digger's body was? The body? Uh, yeah. It looks like a Mercury, man. 
Really? Board, yeah. How did how do they keep fabricating that sheet metal every time? Oh, it's fiberglass. Oh, really? Yeah. So yeah. they just have like a mold of it. Yeah, they have a mold. They uh, they switch it up all the time. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's pretty cool. I uh, yeah, El Toro Loco. I remember the Maximus guy. Oh my gosh, the Ninja Turtle one. Dude, right. Dude, how how hard is it inside that cab when they land those big jumps? Like, do they not around. just get absolutely rocked? <laughs> Well, it's, it's a great question. Well, you could see all the suspension work. Like, it's crazy money in these trucks, eh? That's unbelievable. Like, these th things are making, like, 15, 1,600 horsepower. Some of them are, like, 2,000. <laughs> they run on alcohol, right? Really? Oh, yeah. Like, rubbing alcohol? Like vodka. Like, like Vicks yeah, NyQuil. Yeah, like Polish <laughs> vodka, yeah. <laughs> I, these are bringing back Scooby-Doo. I forgot they had a Scooby-Doo one. So, Matt, how much money do you need for us to start the GoFundMe? Yeah, let's if we're do gonna it do up. an Applewood Monster Truck. Yeah, Applewood Monster Truck. Do you think we could be ready for 2022? Or 20? Pull up, pull up the Escalade one. I love what? that one. Yeah, yeah. Escalade Monster Truck. Yeah. It's Since like an when? ESV stretch one. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. This is real, eh? Yeah, it's sick. That's wow. Amazing. That's cool. Do you guys remember the dinosaur? Like, yo, just for a sec. Dinosaur, imagine that no. sitting out front. Imagine that sitting out front. I think we would attract all the buyers from up north. <laughs> <laughs> we would see more lifted truck sales per kilometer than any GM dealership has ever seen. And you know what? I think, do you think if we sacrificed a Chevrolet Spark for the Auto Mall Monster Jam and we did it ourselves, do you think we could get that money back? <clears throat> we roll over an $11,000 Spark. Do you I, don't, I don't know if the wheel span would even fit the body. <laughs> It's like it's a one wheel. You couldn't even get the second wheel behind it. But do you think it would be worthwhile if we if we do this to an Escalade, a new 2021, we just absolutely, Matt, you're going to just go to town. We say, listen, we're going to start the GoFundMe. Don't worry. The Patreon money is rolling in. Do what you need to to make this truck a winner, right? Like, as long as I can drive it after. You that. can drive it, dude. I, <laughs> dude. Dude, where do you even start? Like, Do you have to replace the whole frame and everything on that truck? It's custom, yeah. It's like chromoly. Uh, it's basically like a race car like you know the um, yeah like a roll cage right yeah they build it from scratch yeah. so they just like lift that body off try to it's, keep it it's all custom fabricated just, just with like down. a fiberglass body yeah yeah so how much do you think these tires like each would be I'd say probably around three four grand each that's not too bad they're probably as tall as i am yeah probably what about what about the brake jobs <laughs> do you think the brake jobs on these are rough <laughs> do you think you have to do a job after every show drum brakes or disc brakes that has disc brake near the, uh, it's in the center, like uh, near the dif differential. Yeah. yeah. Crazy brakes on these things. You can see them glow red hot. Really? When yeah. They, uh, beat on them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got to show you. You guys don't remember the dinosaur that would come out and eat the cars? No, you guys do. Monster Jam dinosaur. You guys as do. As soon as you show me, I guarantee I'll remember, but not off the top of my head. The, the, the dragon. It was a dragon. Sorry. It was a dragon. You guys have to remember this. Okay, it's not a car. Monster monster truck. It would eat the cars at the very end. It would come out. I don't know how there's no photos of like this. Like a hungry hippo? It was massive, and it would shoot flames and stuff out um, of its mouth. And the cars would drive into its mouth? They would try and, like, not... I guess I'm trying to remember how I imagined it as a kid. I'm trying, I was going <laughs> to say, I don't know if you're like recalling no, memories. No, monster like, truck, as soon as you said dragon, flames, I'm like, oh, yeah. mechanical. I don't know I what there. to search here, Google. Google's letting us down because there was for sure. Monster, okay, so there's something like this. I don't remember that. You, you got, tell me you guys don't remember this? No, I don't remember that. What? Okay, well, I don't know. Maybe I was going to different monster trucks. Maybe it was a Saturday event, dude. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they didn't bring it out on Sunday because they ran out of gasoline and propane. They saved Look, the juice for the last day. Can, but can you imagine? It's a small county fair, and every year there's the there's the rally cars and the bumper and the derby. You know, all of a sudden, some guys like this year in my barn, there's only like two or three people in the town that knew about. It. He's like, we're building a dragon, and all of a sudden, this guy he brings it to the derby event. Can you imagine how much of a hero that guy must have been? And he's like, we're not just going to build it. We're going we're gonna to make it shoot flames. We're going to give it mechanical arms. I think they need to bring stuff like that back. Like, would you not just be absolutely terrified that that thing would just catch fire, though? 
Like you turn the flame off, you're like, shh, shh, and then you turn it off, and next thing you know, it's just burning up there. I feel like that's what they would hope for. Let's be honest. You know what? I'm going to call this right now. I'm going to call this right now, actually, because this just came to my head. 2022 or 2023, the EV Cybertruck, Tesla's making a monster truck. Get out of here. Tesla is going to make a monster truck. Can you imagine if the Tesla monster truck, would the batteries be too heavy to make it jump, or could they get that boy off the ground? <laughs> <laughs> do you think can you imagine like you're listening to the tesla monster truck and all you can hear is Dude, like, like the mud kicking it, up it's a whole new <laughs> level of driving they, they hit the gas pedal and instead of the thing roaring it'd be it, completely silent and the thing would just do like a backflip it has so much torque <laughs> i that would actually be not that tesla needs to do any marketing but could you imagine yeah it's a trap. Okay, so somebody's wheels. already thought of it. Somebody's already thought of it, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Don't worry about it. But I think if it they... It doesn't look like it's got much air. No, and it looks, <laughs> it looks pretty gasoline, uh, gasoline-oriented. But if they were to make an electric one, can you imagine how funny that would be? And they just had, like, PA speakers out the back. Vroom, vroom, vroom. I think that's what they'd have to do. That would be the most awkward, like... That, when the Tesla truck comes out, that's when you take your bathroom break. You know, okay, now go to the bathroom fast before the next one, right? That's probably the way that they would operate that, right? Out of all the cars, Matt, if you could make your monster truck, what body would you make? Honestly, I, I like the uh, the Escalade. I don't know, maybe you, like you like do Escalade. the Escalade, maybe like a Bugatti, something like a crazy, Bugatti. Right? <laughs> I think Rolls Royce that's, needs to get in the monster next truck game. level. Bugatti monster truck. Listen, if this isn't taken, we'll create the name right there now on Instagram. That would be sick. Matt, that's up your alley, dude. Modify 2017. And there you go. And this, this, is probably just, uh, this is probably just a showroom car. Like, I feel like they don't actually race this sucker, you know, or get real down and dirty with the Monster Jam. If somebody actually raced this. So, hey, you guys know that Rolls Royce had their best quarter ever this year, which I thought was really interesting. Speaking of monster trucks, you got to Google this right now. Wow, you got to check it out. See. Let me see where they jump. So they jumped a significant percentage. Really? Yeah. And I think that's interesting, just shifting gears for a sec, because if you think about it, like everybody's still struggling during the pandemic. Somehow these sales of these $400,000 cars are at an all time high. I think that's really interesting because not to get political or, or economic or anything, they're expensive cars. Mm -hmm. And to be quite honest, there's more features in a $100,000 Escalade than there is on a Rolls Royce, let's just call it spade a spade. You're driving it because you want people to know that your car is worth more than their mortgage. At least not in the GTA anymore. Your house is worth about three Rolls Royces yeah. on average, which is fine. It's not fine, but we'll move on. <laughs> it's, it's not fine, <laughs> but, but, but okay. Yeah, can you imagine they had their, their, their best quarter ever in, awesome. in history? And it's like you look at some of these Rolls Royces, like what do you think Rolls Royce, Matt, from – like, I know that they, they talk a big game about the engines and, you know, the build quality and the craftsmanship. Well, they're hand-built, right? They say well, what does hand-built mean? Because um, they're still CNCing all parts off machine. Well, anything hand-built, I think, is just more pride, obviously, right? Yeah. It's not like a machine putting it together. So, I mean, uh, you're going to get better quality. Yeah. I guess they have a, they still have a production line. Don't get me wrong, but and it's limited production, yeah. Yeah, limited production. That's for sure. <clears throat> Best quarter ever. I just think that's super interesting to know during everything that's going on right now. By far, my favorites are the trims inside. What do you mean the trims inside? <clears throat> the different trims inside. Like if you look at the different trims, like you can get the wood. Like you can get some really cool, like artistic kind of trims inside. Like yeah. really, really neat. Huh? Yeah, so the what is it? The stars on the on the roof. Yeah. How that, much is that upgrade? That's just silly territory. I, I don't know how much it is. I know it's pricey. Roof stars price w worth the price though. When you're buying that, you need to get that. Okay, so this is not not accurate. It's just fiber optics or something like that. It's become standard, man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Rolls Royce. So if, yeah. $12,000? Would, would you know. roll around in a Rolls Royce, Matt? Would I? Come on, man. If you buy it from me, I will roll yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, the GoFundMe, the Patreon, I think the first allocation of that money is going towards a monster truck. And then we can make 
your dreams come true, unless we've made our dreams come true. So do you think, like, honestly, if we ran a monster truck up and down the auto mall and it said Applewood and it was 1,400 horsepower? I think we'd have a lot of cops show up here. <laughs> yeah, I would say. <laughs> but at what point does it, at what point does he come as a cop and leave as a fan? You know every, what I'm saying? Every single time. Every single time. Every single time. Yeah, and... You can't not see it and not be a fan. And the thing is, if there's if there's a bunch of police that come outside, I think to, there's got to be some kind of limit on social gathering. So we have to respect that as well. Yeah, you know what? Sorry, we're only allowed five police officers at a time. You guys just need to back up to the yeah, curb. Yeah, wait in line or purchase <laughs> your fast pass ticket. <laughs> I think I think if we did a, an Automall show... The Santa Parade is cool every time we, we roll it around through the Automall, but... I just, I've been jonesing to get a dirt hill in the back for these new Hummers and just do like a bumpy, you know, suspension test course. We just sacrifice a part of the, where the trucks were and we just build up this gravel hill. Like a rock climbing wall? Ba yeah, basically. For a car. For a car. Yeah. Yeah, it show us what you can do. Yeah, the, the police were not a big fan of like the Yanko either. I heard about that. Yeah. So the a little, little bit too loud. <laughs> what happened? Oh, you didn't tell, hear that? Tell him, oh, Jeff. No. Tell him, Jeff. Uh, yeah, they, we wanted to see how the Yanko yeah. drove. So, I mean, right. somebody drove it out and down <laughs> around the auto mall, and it was literally down around the block here. And yeah. as it came back, and the doors were open to the showroom. We were pulling into the showroom, so yeah. we wanted to see how it drove before we pulled yeah. it inside right. and parked it for a long time. Literally, as it pulls in the showroom, like two police cars just follow it into the auto mall. Yeah, oh, we've no. had a noise complaint. It's like, really? In 30 seconds. We, we didn't even, like, we just didn't even get it even out of, like, third gear, I don't think. Yeah. You can't, probably, <laughs> with that car. There's no... It's, it's so loud, though. I don't blame them. Like, it's so loud. Yeah, that was... I remember hearing about that. I remember just the police car showing up out front. Yeah. Applewood, we respect our police. We respect our community. We're just joking around. But, yeah, there are some cars that are very loud and very Ridiculous. fast. Well, at least we don't, like, pound them down the strip, right? right? Like, yeah, we don't, like, like, pound it. Like, well, it's just... they've put up, they've put up uh, signs now saying you can only go 40 kilometers an hour. Yeah. And it just, I wonder if they were really having that much of a problem before. I guess that they were. Well, there's, if you stand outside, like, at night, there's a couple ones that, like, fly by here with a super well, it's loud a, exhaust. Well, it's a really good spot, I, I, I suppose. <laughs> I've not ever driven... <laughs> If you were thinking about doing something bad like that. Correct. Because <laughs> there's really, it's kind of like, I, I don't know. It's off the beaten path. I get yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's all we need to say. So check this out. This is more of like a talking point here. <clears throat> the Genesis chief designer, he has some commentary. Now, I pulled this article up a couple days ago, but I just, I thought it was interesting. Slow uphill battle for Genesis. You guys know how they've branded themselves as, hey, you can buy your car online. Yeah. Genesis is now at the point where they're pulling the branding back and they're giving their branding back on a store level. Oh, really? Yeah, they have standalone locations now, and I think they're kind of mixing in that, that clientele back. Um, their, their new models look very good, and I think they're doing a great job with it. But it's just interesting that they're choosing to pick a new point of distribution i suppose instead of just going truly online um i think i'm gonna call it right now i think genesis is gonna start moving into like the hundred thousand dollar ev like luxury space i would not be surprised and i think their build quality is going to be insane like some of these cars man this looks like an this is an aston martin correct mm -hmm. me if i'm wrong if you didn't have glasses on is this an aston martin yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah if i took my glasses off Aston Martin for sure. Even the the, the wings there, it just they that know what they're one doing. Almost looks like an old Jag. It does. It looks very right? British inspired. Yeah. 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 Well, obviously they got the British racing green. You know, they they knew what they're doing. It's fitting for sure. And then the back, like looks this like look. A bend. It, this looks like the AMG GT yeah. a G, a Gullwing, it, it, right? You know what? You're very right. Absolutely. <laughs> right from the back, that looks like the Gullwing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, all fun fact. Every time I've seen one of those Gullwings, always in Oakville. It's always in Oakville. They only sell them in Oakville. I guess. Makes sense. Like, there's the AMG dealer there, but <laughs> I guess that's where they're coming from. To be fair. It's like, yeah, can Oak, I... Can Oakville I, and Scarborough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, can I get that? Wing? Uh, where do you live? <laughs> yeah, let me check your postal code. Yeah, but the interior of this car, like, it looks pretty snazzy. I like that a lot. And, and the one thing I do appreciate is, like, 
concept cars are now not so far away. You remember seeing, like, even 10 years ago, and I brought this up last episode, the Escala. It took Cadillac 10 years to put the Qs in the CT6, literally, like, 10 years later, seven years later. Now it's like you see these concept cars, boom, they're out two years later, which is awesome. Yeah. And I guess it's just kind of like the speed of everything these days. It's like they don't have a choice, which is really interesting. But I wonder if it's about the hype, too. Like the hype will wear off nowadays. What do you just mean? Because like, there's so much to focus there's on. There's a lot of, you know, yeah. With the internet and stuff, I mean. There's something every five minutes. It's right. The latest and greatest. It's like if that's not going to come to life, I mean, next week I'm going to see something different and go, ah. Yeah, you'll probably see how there's going to be some new Mercedes that has, you know. It's got to come to life. Yeah, that's exactly the truth. You see a ton of stuff online that never comes to life, and you're just, mm. Yeah. Drawings and renderings and stuff, you're just like, mm. So how's sales? Busy? Sales? Yeah. Sales has been crazy. Crazy, yeah. And I think, I think we the challenge we've had is keeping yeah. cars in stock. Yeah. Because there's that's, just... That's the biggest thing in inventory. Yeah, for the, for those who are listening right now, by the way, this is we do this to try and give you guys some entertainment. But we do have some pretty good deals right now. Costco is still on. Well, I was just gonna say, I mean, deals deals aside, if you want or need a car right now, like you you need to come you in. You gotta yeah, buy it now. You gotta come There's in gonna be none one. next month. Because as much as I'm like you know <clears throat> trying to hold on to cars, like we're not trying to hold on to cars. We're yeah. selling them like crazy. We're not getting any more in, and it's like if you're down the road and you need some cars and I don't have anything, you're going to get leftovers. Yeah. And I hate to say it like that, but it's like, if you need something, come now, buy it now while yeah. it's here, while you can get it because you might not be able to get it in six months. Yeah. It's pretty hot right now. And the problem with the, the trucks for all manufacturers right now is I think the, Produ- yeah, the, the production of the supercomputer, the chips, the, the silicon chips, chips. Yeah. Yeah. nobody the, can get those. Microprocessor. So, yeah. So you basically have these trucks that are 90% built. Yeah, and they well, just need to be programmed to have that chip put in whatever, you know. I literally heard that they're taking, like, a microprocessor, putting it in a car, driving it out of the factory, parking it, taking it out, putting it in the next one, using the same chip for every car just to move them out. And there's just a big lot of cars just stacked with no chips. Wow. That they're waiting on. That's, I don't know if that's true, but... I think Doug Ford could uh, make a solution of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All cars stay at home. <laughs> All cars stay at home. <laughs> stay at home order for all cars. Yes, but anyways, guys, I think I think we're coming into a great weekend. The weather's going to be fantastic. This was just a fast one today. We just wanted to get back on schedule. Yeah, well, I definitely saw some cool uh, cool EV cars that I didn't know existed. Exactly. Got I like back it. some monster truck memories. I like it. Matt, how do you feel? Were we entertaining enough for I you? I feel great, man. Good. Very good. Is this something we, you would come... Do you, want, do you want us to, like, give you <laughs> Matt's the... like, let me get down to that Regal. Yeah. You're ready to go. You're ready to go, man. I want you on for more, and I'm dead serious. Once we have some more engagement, um, honestly, the live calls or some of those questions would be kind of cool. And whatever you want to talk about, don't let us run the show, man. You're the boss, man. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Until it breaks. Until something breaks. And I'll be like, hey, Matt, by the way, I need your help. Anyways, folks, thanks so much. That was episode number nine. Uh, tune in. Don't forget, you can download, favorite all this stuff, and follow us so you can get more Uh, up-to-date information on all the episodes as soon as they release. And uh, guys, have a great weekend. Thanks so much. Nice. Yeah, Mike. That was fun.